Welcome to another Wayward Wednesday. Best laid plans. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I had this idea for a bookish virtual dinner party wish list or something. I know it sounds very scrambled, but I was gonna do that because tomorrow is American Thanksgiving. There's many people that I'm thankful for. So happy Thanksgiving if you celebrate it. But that you know work. I put a lot of work into it, but um it is mostly done. The concept and the details that I thought about, I just I don't think I can make the video in time, so what I'm doing today instead is uh, doing a book tag, the literary dinner party tag. I saw that on John's channel, Books of Blood, that I'll be linking down below. If you like horror, you should check him out. And I'm saving my dinner party idea for December, so don't worry. I mean, if you worry, <laughs> you're still gonna see it this year. I just need a little more time. I'm sorry. Siri, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> She's sorry. Well, I'm sorry too. I'll work my hardest to have it out in December for you. And this tag is not quite what I had envisioned for my video, so it's okay, but it's still a literary dinner party and people are having dinner parties tomorrow. So let's do that. The original creator of this tag was Lady Jane Books. I'm also linking her channel down below. So we start with the guest list, as usual. Which booktubers would you like to invite, i.e. tag for this literary dinner party? I know this is a really busy season, so I don't expect anyone to do this tag, but this sounds fun. Please consider yourself invited to my dinner party. First question, when you are at a dinner party, do you ask people what they are currently reading? If not, why not? Have you received any great recommendations at a dinner party for a new book to read or had an especially interesting bookish conversation there? Uh, no, I usually don't because most of the people I know are not that bookish. Uh, with the exception, I mean, here where I live in Canada, in Brazil, we're always talking about books. But my mother-in-law reads quite a bit, so whenever we get to get a fridge in a party, I usually end up asking what her latest reads are, but we have very different tastes. So, so far I haven't gotten a recommendation out of here or successfully giving her one. Question two, which authors, living or dead, would you invite to a dinner party? These invites can go out one at a time or in groups so various authors would get to meet each other. This is very similar to the idea I had for my other video. So I'm skipping it for now because I don't want to repeat myself. I'm saving it for my other video, but let's just say there's a lot of authors I would love to have at a dinner party. And this will come and no surprise to no one. One of them, it will always be Agatha Christie. So there's that. Three, which characters would you like to invite? This is such a hard question. There are some, so many characters. I love, and at the same time, I'm really bad with character names, but who do I want in my party? Let's go with Poirot. I would love to have Poirot at any dinner party I throw. Question four, have you ever wanted to invite a historical figure after reading a biography or autobiography about the person? Who would it be? And the answer is no, I don't read biographies or autobiography and um, are there historical figures I might invite for a dinner party? Yes, but um, I can't answer the question because I never read that biography. Five, what would you serve at one of these parties 
or perhaps what would one of your literary guests bring if you hosted a potluck meal? I don't know, this would be quite an interesting, like I like this idea of potluck and sometimes I like to be creative and to have themes. So I think it would be very fun to just put it out there for all my guests to bring a dish or a drink that they think represent their favorite book. I think it would be a very interesting party and just to make things easier, I would make this just a happy hour kind of dinner party, just tapas, little bites, only appetizers and drinks, and you know, eat them all night, because why not? Sometimes that's the best part of any dinner party. Anyway, six. What is your favorite meal scene in a book or a screen adaptation of a book? Hmm. Okay, I would say that some of my favorite meal scenes from a book or a movie adaptation of a book will be basically all the meal scenes in The War of the Roses. They were hilarious. I love the movie. And it is based on a book by Warren Eller. So that's that. I would, if you haven't watched the movie or read the book, I highly suggest you do, but especially the movie because Kathleen Turner and Michael Douglas, comedy gold. Dinner parties aren't the only times people share food and drink. Are there literary scenes you love where characters get together over brunch? afternoon tea, picnics, cocktail parties, etc. Yes, I would say that's not necessarily the focus, but especially older book, golden age mystery books. I love dinner scenes because it puts me right in the mood. And a scene that I particularly enjoy is a tea shared by three characters in the book Set Cypress by Agatha Christie. That is, I think, as far as food goes, the one that got stuck in my head. Eight, name one of your favorite cringe-worthy dinner party scenes in a book or adaptation. I should have prepared for this tag. I'll just go, not necessarily with the favorite, but the one that I can remember and it was pretty good. I just finished Apples Never Falls by Leanne Moriarty and there is a brunch for Father's Day in the book that was very uncomfortable for someone who was not part of the family and I felt <laughs> I felt what the character felt it was like really really cringeworthy like can you imagine being in a dinner party everybody is a family member except you and then all of a sudden they start washing their dirty laundry in public. I was like, okay, I die. Exactly. When the pandemic ends, what will you serve at your first dinner party or take to the first potluck meal you attend? Okay, I was subscribing to the spice recipe box. Madam spice i think i'll have them linked down below they give you recipe cards and all the spices you need to make a complete meal from appetizer to dessert uh, from different places of the world so i have about six of those boxes and uh, that because of the pandemic i mean it's not fun to go through all the trouble just for the three of us so i put my subscription on hold until the pandemic is done but i'll definitely be visiting those boxes and making those meals because uh, they are the perfect no reason dinner party meals or like they're perfect for dinner parties that you don't need a reason is not a special celebration it's just having people over that's what i meant to say that was it for this book tag hope you enjoy until next time with a hummingbird